Day 12, starting from scratch. Quote, All things which are backwards eventually make sense. End quote. Today, she spent copious amounts of her life in nothing. Nothing is by no means easy, you know. Be my guest, she says. Give it a go. Wake up in the morning and don't pick up your mobile. Eat lunch while doing nothing else, not even listening to music. Ah, oh, do forgive her. These pages are not about teaching, let alone preaching. <sighs> her day was spent in nothing and involved much of that. She ended her three-day fast a day early with it just not feeling right, too controlled and unnatural for the sake of clearing her body and allowing it to relax some. But truly, she is wanting nothing more than a really delicious chocolate bar, milk chocolate at that. During this time, she cares not about much. There's a resounding desire for self-care. But whatever does that mean anyhow? The whole business idea was centered around seeing others thrive. But how can she possibly do that? not herself thriving. She has a home. Starting from scratch, day 13. She's taken to writing before sleep, and this night, 11.11, has not only just smiled at her, she smiled back. It was a day of great movement, starting with her own. With meditation done, she looked down at her hands, not only different shades, but also different shapes. Cool, she thought, not seeing this for the first time. Again, she took notice of the same thing whilst applying makeup, something she'd not done in a few days. Though she does often see blue and white orbs, it was her first time seeing the sparkle. In the light, anyhow. Actually, hang on. Just last week, whilst in the shower, she saw white sparkles around her. She's reminded of that just now. She's become accustomed to seeing these same sparkles when she closes her eyes, but the ones she's witnessed to today are different. It was the tip of her left forefinger which sparkled with blue and white. Not gigantic or anything, just little but noticeable sparkles. She already knew it would be a good day. A glass of warm lemon water down, some writing done, and she was all bundled up to go get her fix. That's not the important part of the story, not before telling you something else. The something else? Well, for all the days she's hibernated and allowed herself nothingness, stillness, just feeling goodness, when she stepped outside into her Bratislava's fresh air, who adorned her a bright, fluffy coating of fresh snow, she couldn't but smile. She walked slowly up to the bus stop, taking in each moment, so very happy to be alive, so very happy to be outdoors, so very happy to be walking. She hadn't realised the snow was such an issue, staring at the window, taking in the beauty of winter, until, that is, the bus came to a slow, controlled halt. Sat facing the opposite direction of the driver, she took notice of what was going on. The bus had slid into the oncoming lane and stopped there for some time. She bravoed at the driver silently and then wished him well as they were all let off. The walk to the tram wasn't all that long, and she appreciated that that was her course, to walk in the snow. Now, getting back to her quote-unquote fix, and before she goes further, what she wants to ask is this. What if, what if there's nothing wrong with you? It all ties in, you see, or will. Suzanne Henkel's asked her that very question in her TEDx speech of the same title. 
and in doing so reminded her of herself. She'd even made a video herself along the very same lines titled Be Yourself Unapologetically. In essence, both she and Susan are saying, stop flipping judging yourself. Her fix? Chocolate. Milk chocolate. And she'd resisted for a while, but last evening she even checked the night buses to see if even she could reach a gas station. Eventually, she fell into sleep and crazy wacky dreams resolved to herself that she would get her chocolate first thing upon awakening. And there wasn't a thing wrong with that. As per Susan's line of questioning, she went through it on herself. I really, really, really want that chocolate. Well, what's wrong with that? As Susan would question, well, she responded to herself, it's the equivalent of heroin. And what's wrong with that? I shouldn't, because if I have some, I'll only want more. What's wrong with that? Of course, she kept going down a list until it dawned upon her how hard she was being on herself. In a moment, it was as though all the domino pieces flattened out, leaving her standing in a white space. She reduced the questioning down to one thing. God, consciousness, spirit, source energy. Who or which never judge her, rather only ever do the opposite, love her. And in that moment, she felt liberated once again. And the chocolate went from being an urge she needed right now to a want, which could happen later. It did, and she set herself up well for it, asking why she wanted it anyhow. Because I love the way it tastes. I love how it melts in my mouth. I love the smell of it. I love the texture of it. But she also made deals with herself that she stuck to. I like these games, she said. This is how I create and shift my life. Create through thought and writing and feeling. Feeling good, that is. Then step up. She ate the chocolate in pure joy. It being the very best thing she could put into her body. And all other things associated with it thrown into the rubbish bin. Fuck the rules, she thought. This is my game. Rather funny it was that they, she and Susan, used similar examples in their videos, both taking smokers, telling them to, instead of giving up smoking as they'd really wished and desired, to rather go and smoke, and smoke and smoke and smoke. In her own video, she attached a statement for the smoker for them to say to themselves before lighting up that, quote, this is the very best thing I can do for my body, end quote. Suzanne just said, go, go and smoke as much as you want. And after just six days of a woman trying everything to stop, she did just that. It all ties in, you see, don't you, darling? We're just so hard on ourselves and we just have to give ourselves permission to just be and feel and do without judging. This topic itself is worthy of its own cover to cover. Perhaps one shall start soon. Anyhow, before moving off this topic and perhaps going to bed, there is one more thing very much tied to this subject for her at least. Ultimately, the subject is the body. There is no need nor desire for her to delve into the past in regards to the subject. Enough of that has been done and now undone as we arrive into this present moment where she has nothing but love for the temple that encapsulates her. It was a meditation she by no accident stumbled upon yesterday. 
not knowing anything more within the video except that it was about Kriya Yoga. Hmm, she thought, Paramahansa Yogananda, she was reminded, and clicked upon it, not even knowing that there would be a meditation. It was just Yogananda that she was curious about. She first listened to Sadhguru's teaching, which eventually went into a meditation. On the meditation, he asked everyone to repeat, I am not the body on the inhalation, and I am not even the mind on the exhalation. She's still contemplating this one, how actually she knows that words defy the message. It was, in fact, this very meditation coupled with Susan and her own words that changed her game again. Thank you for being here, part of this story, none of which is make-believe.